Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, August 27th, 2019, regular selectmen's meeting. Um, all the selectmen are here except for Selectman Pendergast, who is out on the road working. There's the town manager, the town clerk, town assessor, town finance director. As we have the, the public works from the dump, we have uh, transfer, transfer station. <laughs> excuse me, transfer oh station. Is, uh, we have <laughs> we have planning board members here. We have lots of people. And please stand with me and salute the flag. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is, uh, we have uh, minutes from our August 13th meeting. Uh, we have an approval. We'll move the minutes as presented. Second. Second. Go ahead. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, first public comment. First public comment. Open. Step to the podium. Is uh, state your name. Address all questions, comments, curses to the board. <laughs> it's just because I got up here. Nicole Fecto, uh, Wingate Lane, Berwick. Um, I actually was coming to speak about the appointment of David Ross Lyons to the planning board. I'm the vice chair of the planning board. And if you don't know Dave, he has really shown a vested interest in being a member. He has come to the last few months worth of meetings. Uh, he's studying the processes. He's familiar with all of our applications right now and uh, we don't usually get that much participation preemptively so it's uh, a breath of fresh air to have somebody that's so invested because as you guys know we're all very invested in our planning process and that's all I wanted to say also we're having a planning board meeting tomorrow night a little workshop meeting at 630 Be there. step right up I know what you can talk about I'm Hokey from the transfer station. Uh, this is just a last reminder of the hazardous waste day a week from this Saturday on September 7th at the South Berwick Maintenance Facility on Route 4 where they have school buses and stuff. I want to remind people not to bring the uh, hazardous waste stuff to the transfer station because they'll be taking it right back home again. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be, for, like I say again, from nine to one and you got to be there by night and out of there by one and they don't want you getting out of your vehicle they'll unload the stuff for you so is there any questions just one hokey is there is there a limit to how much can be dropped off no nope. no limit all right so. thank you okay then yep. We'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet we'll, well. Yeah. I bet we'll see you before that. I bet you will too. <laughs> Have a good night. Any more public comment? There are none. Is uh, we have no public hearing. Is uh, reports of committees. Is uh, BCTV. Is I don't believe they have a report tonight. Oh wait a minute! I hear a door opening. Oh, that was Hokey leaving. Um, is uh, Envision Berwick? We have anybody from Envision Berwick that wants to speak? Well, I'll I'll just comment a couple things about the Envision Berwick. Is uh, we had the second concert this last Saturday. It was a huge success, in my opinion. Is again, we had well over 200 people attending. It was a beautiful night. Is, um, is everything went well? Is uh, BCTV was able to live stream it? Is, which is a new first for us too. Is uh, so. Is uh, I think I think that uh, we look forward to doing this a lot more next year. So <coughs> um, we have no department reports tonight. I'd correct? Like to, we can introduce our new finance director at this section, so she can go home. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Yeah, Lisa Vargas. She's our new finance director. Uh, she can. Just stand up. You don't have to come to the podium unless they have questions for you. You haven't no. met several of them, so um, she comes from Lyman. She was there for a long period of time, and she's a breath of fresh air in our upstairs office, and she's 
jumped in feet first. So we're very excited to have her here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you for taking the job. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's having fun. So it sounds like our last right one. Right now? Or yeah. <laughs> She's, she's, another, she's another one of those accountants that likes to have fun with numbers. Uh, I'm good. glad they do. Yeah. Um, get all the, let's see. It should be three for her. Three, yep. Yep. All right, um, we'll take it a little bit of out of order here. Is uh, we have <coughs> to appoint Lisa to Deputy Tax Collector, to Deputy Treasurer, and Finance Director without terms. Um, <clears throat> is, do I have a motion? There's a motion for each individual. Just do all three, blanket. I'll fix all it. Right. <laughs> so I move we appoint Lisa Vargas as the Deputy Tax Collector, Deputy Treasurer, and Finance Director without term. Second. Any discussion? Oh, welcome aboard. All those in favor? Yay. It's official now. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. All right. Lisa, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, well, we've already had one you know, speaking out for David Ross Lyons. Is David, are you here? Huh? Step to the podium and introduce yourself. Tell us why you're uh, interested and uh, a little um, bit of your background. I live on uh, Dobson Road in Berwick. Um, moved to Berwick about five and a half years ago, and due to work constraints and, and life, I didn't really have a lot of time to devote to the community. Had some changes, and I have the availability, and I think the planning board's a good way to start and a good way to shape, help shape the community I call home. Any questions of David? No, thank you for, for uh, taking the challenge. Thanks. And, uh, hey, what, what's your background? Um, I actually work in operations for a healthcare company. And I'm a part owner of um, a home painting company, small business, based out of Berwick. Very good. Is, uh, any further questions? Mm -hmm. I have a motion. I move that we appoint David Ross Lyons to the planning board for a three-year term to expire. I don't know when. <laughs> December 31st, 2022. And this is as an alternate. 2022. Okay. Oh, as an alternate. As an alternate. Okay. Yes. You all have copies under tab eight. Oh. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first day. I'm sorry. <laughs> is we have a motion? Second. We have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Um, thanks for stepping forward. As, uh, we've been calling for volunteers as, uh, for years now. And uh, as, uh, well, it is the planning board tends to you know, have you know, pretty well filled. We do get a lot of people for that. But. Um, is the uh, the alternates have a tendency to move up quickly and become full members, and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll take the other one out of order here, since it's only one was uh, code enforcement. Jennifer McCabe. She is not here. She's a deputy code enforcement officer right now, but we've decided to make some changes. Uh, Dan Vincent is going to spend less time, and he's going to be in the field doing just field work for inspections. And Jen is going to, she's completely certified through all the state. Dan has not finished his yet. Uh, so we're switching that around, giving him less time and giving her more time. And she's got very good people skills and good knowledge of what uh, she needs to have. So. Uh, I recommend her to become a full-time coach, off part-time, but 25 hours a week. So it's a busy office. So moved. A second. I'll second it. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Great. Thank you. Thank you. And she'll be at all your meetings. Okay. Yeah. So now with the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. If this is without terms. Is um, is we have a we have a slate that we're going to go down through. Is we have Alex Bovea, Jamie Blood, Nicole Fecto, Lisa Hustis, Rick Vandenberg, Derek Wright, White, and Tom Wright. Is um, <coughs> is we've been uh, it's another another thing that we've been talking about for uh, several weeks now. Is the comprehensive plan that uh, these are the people that step forward to. Um, Headed up 
is uh, is this and looking at the list is this any of us have some spare time to <laughs> donate to this but it's an important thing um, we are still looking for people to work with us on the comprehensive plan We'll get you next time around, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is uh, we're not going to turn anybody down. <laughs> um, <Okay>. Is um, <laughs> is uh, any questions? Just for the public record, what is the steering committee going to be doing? Um, hopefully, directing everybody else to do all the work. <laughs> um, is the comprehensive plan is uh, is is a multifaceted thing. Is it looks at economic development is the the heritage of the town the makeup of the town where we want the town to be and um, is is what we're going to be doing is we'll have be having a series of meetings probably over the next year or so um, we'll be doing some uh, some uh, getting groups together to discuss different things we'll be having plenty of public hearings I'm sure as um, about what this is all about and it is basically just to help guide where we want the town to be in the next you no know, 10 15 20 years um, the current comprehensive plan I think was in 1989 was when it was first adopted um, it's been amended a couple different times and added to is, um, is a lot of the things that are mentioned in there have been outdated with new technologies and things so it's just more of bringing the town's vision forward so if you're volunteering to help, there's, uh, <laughs> we'll welcome you. I very well may be. It's a good experience. It's a good process. So, so I ten, intend to be here in 10 to 15 years, so it does affect yeah. me. I hope to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Um, we can uh, do this appointment as a slate. So is, do I have a motion? So moved. Want to include Jeremy, and I'll just get the paperwork done. Sure, sure. And then he can get started. Yeah. So yeah I told you we weren't going to forget you. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, we amended his move motion a second. Is uh, <coughs> second. Is uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Is uh, and thanks everybody. Is uh, look forward to you know, working through this. And good luck. <coughs> and the room empties. <laughs> um, unfinished business. We have none listed that I know of. Nope. Is uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jeremy. Good night. Is um, town manager's report. Um, the paving uh, on Worcester Road. They'll be uh, grinding it uh, next week. Um, and hopefully getting the base layer down right directly after that. The uh, Public Works has uh, put in all the culverts. They've got well, one big cross culvert they have to do this week, which won't take them, to, take them a day to get it taken care of. And then uh, Pine Hill, that project will start uh, mid to later September, and they'll grind that as well. That's all completed with culverts um, and get a two-inch base on that. And that should do it. And we're going to be doing the parking lot, the employee parking lot this year. Uh, we're going to rip out the stumps and, and just create more spaces. I think we were going to gain 15 more spaces with the design that the first study had. Uh, so that's a little bit less expensive than doing roads, but be a nice project to have under our belt. When is that going to be done? Uh, sometime in September, mid-September. Uh, let's see. The prime site is uh, the blue sort building, and they're in the process of hauling material out, and they should start doing the cleanup inside uh, within the next month. The parking lot uh, is also scheduled within this time frame, and we expect everything to be done. The end date is 927. We had quite a few cars parking there, and we've moved them over to the prime site. Public Works went in and got rid of the brush and. and uh, swept it and scraped it up so it was good for parking mm -hmm. and it seems to be being used. Uh, union contracts, uh, we finished with the Teamsters and, and we're going to mediation 
the only mediation we have in, in issues is, is wages. Uh, so I haven't got a date on that, but we hope to get it done before the end of September if we can. Um, and then uh, September uh, 25th, we start the police union contracts with a three-year contract. And we're hoping that will go as well as the teams just did. Um, that's all I have. Any questions? That brings us to accounts payable. <coughs> we have account payable warrant 2007 from August 15, 2019, pay amount of $177,781.09. Water warrant 007 from August 15th, 2019, for the amount of $44,402.32. Account payable warrant 2008 from August 22nd, 2019, the amount of $97,007.10. <coughs> we have a water warrant 008 from August 22, 2019, for the amount of $369.54. 396. 96. Nope, 396. 54. <coughs> My dyslexia error there. Is uh, payroll warrant 2008 from August 22, 2019, for the amount of $65,434.76. And a payroll warrant for August 29th, 2019, payroll warrant 2009 for the amount of $55,574.68. I'll make a motion we pay our bills. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That brings us to our 2020 tax commitment. Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Paul McKinney. Um, I wanted to go over the final uh, reevaluation figures uh, that we ended up with. So the 2019 final value uh, increased over the 218 value by 73,984,400, uh, 10 percent change in the town valuation. Residential properties went up about 8 percent. Vacants went up 23 percent. Manufactured homes went up about 1%, condominiums 14%, uh, and commercial 22%. The um, assessment to sales ratio, where, the, where we are compared to the market, is at 97.98%, uh, with a COD of 8.14. The COD is our quality rating, um, tells us that all of our data is, is within 8% you know, of the median, basically. Um, and then the price-related differential is 1.006. The uh, standards are, it has to be between 98 and 103. This indicates that we're not overvaluing the low-end properties or undervaluing the high-end properties. Um, so hearing notices were mailed out on July 26. Taxpayers could either go online to schedule an appointment, call our office, um, and they had until July 20, um, that's not right. <laughs> I think it was um, actually August 1st or so to do that. Um, we had a total of 65 scheduled hearings. Um, some of those were, you know, that were held between July 29th and August 7th. Some of those were phone hearings where people couldn't make the appointment, so we returned a phone call. We did have several people that walked in um, as well, you know, as we were doing the hearings on the in, in this room. So we did, you know, we took those people. We didn't refuse anybody. Um, we've had a couple calls after that as well, so that we've responded to. Um, most people were questioning the increase in their property value, of course. A lot of them were just interested in the process and how we developed the, you know, the values and where the, and an explanation of how the rear valuation worked. So that's um, basically on that. Anything get particularly Questions? tense or everybody? Anybody no, particularly um, mad? No, the, uh, the, the ones that I thought would be tense would be the, the uh, storage facilities, which up, went up quite a bit. We did have a couple sales of uh, those, you know, the small storage facilities, and those went up probably as much as 100%. Wow. 
oh. and I didn't get any feedback at all. Hmm. Uh, I had a couple people call and ask questions, but that was about it. Um, we had a couple in the uh, mobile home parks where the where the other ones that went up quite a bit. Um, the parks themselves, the not park, yeah, not, not the, the individual homes, but right. the parks themselves. I'm sure it may flow down, you know, to the tenants, unfortunately. But uh, looking at what the other mobile home parks sales were in the area, we were way undervalued on them. So um, we had we've had you know sales in Dover, Epping, um, nothing in Southern Maine, but a lot locally within you know within New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire. So. And I did get some response, but I mean, nothing that people, um, you know, were really concerned about, I guess. But um, they weren't willing to share their income stream. They weren't well. willing to share their income stream, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that, those were the two biggest examples. There was, you know, some of the large taxpayers that had multiple properties. You know, those people came in and we responded. Um, there was two low-income housing projects in town they may be coming back in an abate you know for an abatement but they haven't said anything yet and i've asked them for income and you know we've yet to receive anything so i just couldn't keep it open any longer to you know to respond to them we need to get done with right. the commitment so we may be hearing from them but of, of individual homeowners that came in yep. um is where, where did most of were, were most of in the end would most of them agree with the assessment or oh. was it changing <laughs> um not necessarily agreed but they were satisfied with the response that we we didn't have anyone that really <clears throat> gave us a problem or objected i mean you know they also have the abatement process and right. we indicated that to them but no there was no one that was really um overvalued they just want to know why their value went up that much we did make adjustments you know during the hearing process to yep. bring some down or you know, we found some errors during that time period. We went out and inspected probably eight or ten different properties uh, as a result of the hearings that we, you know, we didn't ins have inspected before. So, uh, for, over the, for the most part, I mean, you know, 60, what did I say? We had 65 hearings on three, you know, about uh, 3,000 properties. I mean, it's not, no, that not was pretty good. Right. Yep. Um, all right, so fall on the commitment. Um, you've got the memo, so I'll just kind of read from this. But uh, on the spreadsheets, I've com provided a comparison of uh, just the prior year as well as a comparison of numerous previous years of the tax rate calculation forms. And then also gave you a spreadsheet of the town's taxable value increased from 2018 to 19. Um, the net valuation base increased by 10.85%. Uh, spreadsheets will show that the uh, compared to the 2018-19 county taxes, uh, county tax appropriations increased by 3.84%. Municipal appropriations <coughs> increased by 20%. School and education appropriation increased by 5%. Um, in total, the increase was 11.73%. Um, state and other revenues are expected to increase by about 19 percent in total uh, so consequently the next the net tax dollars to be raised by local property taxes increased a little over 10 percent um, on the uh, the spreadsheets that we fill out um, gives us a range of what our tax rate can be and it was between 1735 and 1820 um, allowing for the overlay that was um, that I think we need because of the reval and other things uh, we're looking to recommend a rate of 1753 which is a slight decrease from last year's rate I'd be willing to answer any questions or The 1753. What is that in proportion to? Like, um, we're, uh, what do you mean? Wasn't? I mean, 1753 per hundred dollars worth of. Value oh, I'm sorry. Or? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. The te the mill rate is 0 0.01753. Okay. Times whatever your assessment would be, to um, to come up with your taxes. Right. So that gives us an overlay of one hundred and forty-two thousand six hundred and eleven dollars. Okay. 
Okay. And that overlay is a, to account for any abatements that we may get or anything, you know, from from the reval. It's usually a little higher in a reval year than in a normal um, tax year. And you think that that's sufficient to cover us for for um, that yeah, eventuality? Yeah, I think that's yes. I think that's <clears throat> sufficient. Yeah. Okay. And especially where we only got uh, a small number of hearings. I mean, I don't anticipate a huge sure. uh, abatement. Okay. Any further questions? Nope. Just one, the 23% uh, uh, increase in vacant properties, that, those are just properties that are uninhabited? Or yeah. businesses so any, that are empty? or um, Yeah, what I, I mean, when we did the reevaluation, we raised the, the land curve, the value of the average lot, you know, based on what the sales told us. Mm -hmm. So that was what everybody saw as the biggest percentage. Some of the home values actually decreased because of the, you know, depreciation. So that's why um, vacant land probably went up for everybody, but some people got a little bit of a break on their house because of depreciation for the last um, the last reevaluation was done in 2006 yeah and we use those safe we don't change any tables um, in the database from year to year I mean those stay the same until you do a full town-wide evaluation and then those are reset based on what the sales indicate All right. Any further questions? Entertain a motion to. Uh, Do they have to uh, uh, vote to approve the. You have to vote to approve the. Valuation, uh, right? The value. Yes, the valuation first. first. Valuation first. Yeah. And then, and then the tax the, rate. Then the tax rate. Right. And then. <laughs> Hang on to your hat. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Patty has the uh, forms, the warrants that need to be signed. Tom has them. Oh, Tom has them. Okay. So I, I would move that we accept the um, town reevaluation that was submitted by our town assessor, uh, town assessor Paul McKinney. Second. Presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Now we need a motion to accept the tax rate. To set the tax rate, yeah. Set the tax rate. And it's, it's uh, been suggested that it be $17.53 per thousand. Per thousand, yeah. For tax year 2019, 2020, so moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Have a good evening. You too. Let's see. We have four signatures on this. Um, Spirit of America Legislative Settlement. Yeah, we uh, expected to have uh, our representative here. She had a, but she may not. She worked at night. Right. So she may not have been able to get the time off. Yep. And we had we changed kept changing the date on the <laughs> on the hat. So <laughs> well, it, it, was, <laughs> it was hard to get her here, but uh, we'll make sure she's here. And we uh, that's for something from the legislature, uh, recognizing Eleanor Murphy as a Spirit of America Award, well deserved. Um, and believe me, she's still talked about up there. They all know her very well. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, she's a, she's it's a funny. real legend. All right. Um, contingency fund request for Time Clock Plus. Yes. Uh, our new finance director uh, is trying Already to... Already spending money, huh? Uh, well, she's... These are, this is actually something that we talked about. Right, Maureen right. and I talked about probably my first year here. And basically, it's an upgrade in how we uh, put time cards in. It's You can do it... Uh, at your computer um, or you can uh, use a card like we have but if you do it you can actually do it you can get an app for your phone and uh, so if you're uh, on the property and you haven't got the, uh, to your computer yet but you're working you can log in and, and plug in your time and it actually GPS as it tells us where you are at that time so it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty safe 
Um, what we the cost is around fourteen thousand, and what we're recommending is we're going to uh, do half from the contingency if it's approved, and half from each department because everybody, all employees use it from police to public works, um, even the summer staff. This will be more accurate. Um, it uh, keeps it from uh, people waiting at the time clock. I hate to say this, but for a certain specific time, they punch in to get the extra quarter, half hour, or whatever they are looking for. This, this is very precise. Um, and it ties right into our uh, TRIO software. Um, so it's very compatible. We are able to do vacation times and submit things electronically versus a lot of paper uh, stuff coming in. So there'll be a bit of a training session for everybody who uses it. But it's, it's a, I've used it in Lisbon where I was working and it was very, very efficient. I could look, pull up and see who's gonna be on vacation from different departments. You authorize those vacations so department heads have that ability to, uh, so it's on, it's on record. <laughs> Is this a is this, is this cost saving or just efficiency saving? It's both. It's efficiency and co and cost savings. It's um, if you've ever seen if you ever worked with employee who's have to punch a clock, um, you, you don't stand there and watch them because it's, it's on the system and they sometimes squeak a quarter of an hour out. They'll punch in at specific times and just get a little bit more money. So. Uh, and it's a better record keeping process and, and it'll take uh, the people doing payroll uh, less time once they're up to, to snuff. And we're also looking to go, besides that, we're also making recommendations to go um, every other week payroll, which is a cost savings for us as well as time. Uh, so she's got a lot of good ideas. Here, Lisa, oh, Patty's shaking her head. There is always a pushback <laughs> on that from people. But, uh, that was going to be my question. So, do you have to get agreement from labor for no, the not new for system this. like this? Okay, not for this. No, nope. not for this. But for uh, um, weekly payroll, you probably would. We you just have to give a, a warning, right? Yeah, we just have to tell them that schedule's changing for payroll. That's all. We don't. It's we can ma do that within our own management rights. We had a lot of pushback, and we, right now we have. Uh, probably less than 10 people who do direct deposit, and we want to make sure that that's, everybody does sure, direct sure. deposit. So really? Ten people? Yeah, 10 people out of the whole organization. Yeah. Huh. I, I require it for my business. I don't like writing checks. Uh, no. So if, if, you, if you want to come work for me, you better have a bank account I can put that money in. Well, it's, it's just an old-fashioned way of thinking sometimes, and um, people like that paper check, and. They go to the bank during their coffee break and they deposit it or cash it. And uh, it's, it's I used to have deposit. some in, in uh, other towns I've worked in that the public works people would race to the bank during their 10 o'clock coffee break and the wives would be there directly after the coffee break <laughs> and they would hand the cash and she never saw the stub or he never saw the stub. So it's, it's, it's just an old way of doing business. Hmm. You know? <laughs> but but it, it's, it's I'll just put my two cents out. I'm not in favor of bi weekly paychecks. So <laughs> is, uh, I, I, you know, if people work for you, they should be paid weekly. That's my feeling personally. So I do kind of agree with that. I, I pay my employees weekly just because I know, you know, it, I used to work for bi weekly paychecks, and it's just such a, I, I consider it a pain to be like, I got to wait, you know. 10 days to get the next paycheck, not, you know, five days. It's just, it's never right around the corner when you need it, you know, right. but that's just the way that I used to live, better. so. Of course, you should uh, manage your funding better. Yeah. Anticipate. <laughs> All right. Well, so, so that's uh, what, that's what we're, we're looking for, which is around 7,000. And we have a balance in our contingency of $49,157.50. So. Have any legal fees coming up? Don't we always? <laughs> um, well, last last year we were way under on our legal fees. We did, we budgeted, I think, forty two thousand, and I don't even think we spent twenty, exactly. which was nice. Um, and this year we budgeted forty thousand, a little bit less. But I don't anticipate any. We don't have any big deals going on at that, this point. Uh, we had the closing once we clo uh, finish up the cleanup, but that's pretty small amount of 
Um, we aren't using the lawyers for union contracts. I, I strictly go email back and forth with them uh, so I don't have to have them down here. Um, and that's worked out real well so far. So we have good people in those meetings and uh, works well. Any further discussion? If not, is I'll entertain a motion. I move that we allot is it seven thousand, seven thousand dollars from the contingency fund to be uh, spent towards or applied to a, a new time management system. Yep. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. I know we skipped over it. I know we skipped over it, but I yeah. caught it. <laughs> yeah, we, we won't let that go. Is uh, We have the November 5th, 2019 town referendum warrant. Is uh, uh, We voted on the, the articles last year. We do have one change. Is <coughs> Article 2. Is it we voted on it is talked about buying the self-contained breathing apparatus is uh, that was um, uh, that was wrong is uh, article two is shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of fifty thousand dollars for the purpose of investing in the capital purchase and replacement of fire department apparatus and vehicles for fiscal year 2019 2020 and place this amount in the fire department capital account established for this purpose with any unspent balances to carry forward each year until fully expended. I'll explain. This was something that we, before we bought new trucks, you always were putting 50000 in and we used some of that funding to start paying down the bond. We haven't funded that for probably the last since we bought the new trucks and, and its funding is used to, if we have major uh, work that needs to be done to one of our older trucks or and we save what we can and use it to purchase new if we have enough money. So uh, Dennis and I talked about that and he wanted to put that back in this year. I made the mistake and didn't put it on the warrant. Uh, and my fire ch chief made sure he reminded me. And uh, so it's on there for this particular warrant. So the SCBAs are? That was already funded. Okay, all right. Yeah, I thought that was in the budget that we yeah, passed in June. Was already okay. So we need to vote on the new article too? Yes. So, so moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Four, zero. So just note when you sign this for me tonight, because I need it signed tonight, the new warrant will have the new article with the four zero yes vote recommendation. Uh, quick claim deeds and or installment contracts. We have three quick claim deeds. Is, uh, let's see if I get these map. U004, 70. All right. <clears throat> I think these were all in repurchase agreements. Yes, these are, are ones that these are all <coughs> you're right. repurchase and, and this particular uh, year that they paid off or two years uh, gets them back on the rolls. Right. You know, so, so this is just a matter of if it's they a paper they, shuffle. they uh, you know have made, fulfilled their contract right with the town and uh, yep. you know, so we're just you know putting it back. So uh, first one is for map U zero zero four lot zero. Seven zero. <clears throat> they have a motion to accept this quick claim deed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? We have Matt R015, lot 002003. I move we accept the quick claim deed as presented. Second. All those in favor? And then we have one with MAP I 
71 lot 009. We accept the quick claim deed as presented as well. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, second public comment. Is second public comment. Is please step to the microphone and give us your name, where you live, and let us know what you want to talk about. I have a feeling Rick Vandenberg wants to talk since he came rushing in here at the end of the meeting. Yeah, well, I was at, you know, at the rec master planning meeting. And I, I, pl I, I planned on coming earlier, but I just couldn't couldn't finish that meeting. Um, Rick Vandenberg, 51 East Pasture Road, Criteria Associates. So I'm wearing my Criteria Associates hat to come before you tonight. Just to let you know that, um, and just to notice that we started our, our remediation work this week. Well, actually last week by uh, uh, at, the, at the Blue Sort building in the parking lot. Today we started digging at the parking lot, and last week we started cleaning some of the some of the inside of the building out, making kind of getting it ready for the asbestos contractor to be in there. There were there um, earlier in August we did a select bid for um, the asbestos removal, the soil removal at, at Prime, and also for the floor repairs that need to go on inside the building. Um, Renault Industries won the soil removal. They were the lowest responsive bidder. The lowest responsive bidder for the floor repairs is K&K Landscape Construction. And um, uh, the asbestos removal contractor is uh, Peniel Environmental from New Hampshire. So those are the three entities that for the next uh, couple of months will be working. Uh, we've got the, the, the soil removal work is, is the most pressing work. That's the work that's got to be finished up for lot 133 by the end of September. And right now we're on, we're on, we're on track to finish. So all things, uh, keep fingers crossed that we, we don't have any bumps in the road. But we did find some slabs up there today. So there's some old, there's some old slabs in the car. I'm assuming, you know, well, when, there was some storage buildings there at one point. But yep. I thought they were closer to, you know, <coughs> further up from the intersection. Well, there, there were, when I was a kid, there were all houses there. So well, I was going to say, there were houses too, I think. <laughs> oh, I think that were. may be what we're looking at. Wow. Yeah, because there's a foundation drain next to a slab. So I'm right. assuming they just tilted in the, the walls and, and, wow. and buried some of that stuff. So we, we'll, have to, we'll have to remove some of those slabs so we can do our sampling. But I think we're, we're on track, at least for right now. So I uh, wanted to let you know that. And so we've asked the, um, we put some signage up and asked the, the folks who park and take the coast bus in the morning to park on the, on the prime. The town manager was nice enough to get town folks to, um, or the, the DPW to, to clear that, to clear the brush away from that, to make that, that parking lot ready. And they moved some, they moved some Jersey barriers. So, so that, so that, that the front, the main lot can be accessed. And so things, uh, I think things are progressing. So I want to let you know that. Any further questions for Rick? No, thank you for the update. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Through, and through while this project is running, I'll, I'll try to come to most select meetings in, yeah, in case you guys have questions. And, and just so you know, we elected you as chairman of the Comprehensive Plan Committee, steering committee, so. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy to serve, though. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Anything, Ken? No, no, no. Um, we have no executive session nope. and other business non-agenda items. Anything to bring up? Nope. Is, uh, one Motion more. to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Well done. <laughs>